everyone, and welcome to Lang Park for the final of the Winfield Cup, the 1984 Brisbane Rugby League Premiership Grand Final. The match today between South Simon and a great crowd out here at Lang Park under pretty warm conditions, ready for the big one this afternoon. Well, South were in three grand finals this afternoon. They were in the third grade final. They came up against Redcliffe. Redcliffe defeated them by 14 points to four. They stepped out in reserve grade. They didn't win that one. They were defeated Valleys by 10 points to six. And what was a very good match. And now, of course, they're trying to make at least two out of three in the big one this afternoon. Well, looking at the both sides, Bill, South's uh, the younger of the sides and uh, more inexperienced. Wynnum, well, people have said that they have the best club side seen running around Brisbane in the last 20 years, 25 years. And, uh, well, it would be a brave man to doubt that because... They, when they play together and they play well, Wynnum look an unbeatable side. Probably about 70% of people out here today would be supporting Wynnum Manly. They've only won one grand final, that was a couple of years ago. They've been in the competition for 33 years. But if you have a look at Southern Suburbs, Mick, they've picked up, I think, something like nine uh, premiership wins. They're a lot older team, of course, a lot older club, but they've done pretty well just the same. Yes, and they've been in the four of the last five grand finals. And... Uh, there's a few players playing out there today that have been through the mill as young as they are for Southern Suburbs. Eggs came up to centre field exactly what the support is like for the Seagulls here uh, at Lang Park this afternoon. Well, let's have a look at the two teams as they stand up and line up for the match this afternoon. And uh, firstly, we might have a look at uh, Winner Manly, I think, Michael. The only Wynnum uh, problem that they've had, of course, has been the bruised ribs of international centre Gene Miles. He was on the receiving end of a crunching tackle from fellow test centre Mal Meninga in the major semi-final just two weeks ago. That was one of the many big hits that Meninga's made in the last few weeks. He certainly hit his straps last week in the preliminary final, and uh, he's one of the key men today for Southern Suburbs in this. Let's have a look at Southern Suburbs. Well, the Magpies have been keeping an anxious eye on the fitness of second rower Kelvin Kerr. He suffered a gash about the left eye in last week's preliminary final against Valley. Required 17 stitches, but he's finally come through and has been past fit to play today. The state lock forward, Bob Linder. Mick, one of the most exciting prospects in this state at the moment. He's resuming after a back injury, and no doubt he'll be a welcome addition to the ranks of Southern Suburbs today. OK, let's have a look at the referee this afternoon. The referee is David Manson. 29-year-old Manson tipped out the favourite, the former test referee Eddie Ward, to get the job today. Ward has controlled six of the last seven grand finals here in Brisbane. Manson is in his third season as a ref has controlled 70 first grade games this is his first A grade grand final has controlled three others two of them are reserve grades the big thing about him Mick he's dropped some 45 kilograms since Christmas that's four stone I'm going to see him after the match I don't know about you well I need to see him it's a, that's a miracle run OK, here's South coming from the northern end of the ground. The kickoff by Meninga, deep down into Winter Manly territory. It'll be taken back there by Brian Walsh. Dropped it back behind him. Walsh up into the field of play. Walsh normally, well, he's played lock forward. He's played 5'8". He's played everything but front row. He's back there on the fullback to take the place of Colin Scott, who, of course, as I said before, is out with suspension. That's Lewis touching it for the first time in the match. Obviously getting a bit of a dust-up from winger Peter Jackson and a penalty going to win him. And the first man in there, big Mal Meninga, and not many more of the South players, but he didn't seem to be worrying about that at all. So, it'll be Winner Manley to kick for touch, Lewis to do the kicking here. Drive in across there into the Frank Burke stand, which is on the, well, that's the oldest of the two stands here at Lang Park. I think you can expect a bit of fireworks shortly, uh, Bill. Well, there's the ball being taken up by Tony Kajewski for Winner Manley. From the play of the ball now, this is Dawes, the halfback, coming through very solidly, but not getting too far this time. Running into a heap of Southern Suburbs players is the second rower in Mal Green. He let a couple go too. This is French on his way through. French trying to get the pass to Butler, but a tender touch over here on the terrace side of the ground. Nice run by Ian French very early in the piece. Yes, football, pass going astray, unfortunately. Winner Manley, not afraid to throw the ball around. So this is Brad Sully to line up to the scrum. It's eight metres inside Winham territory. In it goes. He goes down on his knees at the back of the scrum to pick it up. Quickly going to be caught at the side of the scrum. Rounding up inside. It's Muller dropping in his dummy half. So cutting back this time is Halverson, the 5'8". Hemmed in, got it to Muller. Muller outside then to Vivas, the winger. He went skirting across over there, looking for a bit of the action. Put down eight metres inside Wyndham Territory. This is Muller up his dummy half now. Back to Sully, outside to Kellaway. Bob Kellaway up to about ten metres inside Wyndham Territory. They'll need some strong runs from him today too, Mick. Yes, he'll have to play a fine game. And he's uh, had a bit of an injury cloud over him. He, 
Every now and then his leg gives out. Let's hope it keeps going this afternoon. Kelvin Kerr getting up to play it. Muller is the dummy half now. Back over there to Sully. Sully outside to Halverson. Halverson straight ahead. Broke away from Green. Stackle back inside to Meninga. Taken ball and all by Lewis. That good. was a good tackle by Wally. Little bit of uh, their own back on Big Mal. And Big he, hit by Wally. If he hadn't have taken him ball and all, could have been a bit of trouble. There's Sully putting it through. They're going to put uh, this fullback Walsh under a bit of pressure, but he takes that one okay. Up, bumps off the tackle of Jackson, but eventually put down some 15 metres out from his own line. I think that, that Walsh will be pretty safe under pressure. This is Gene Miles now. Let's see him stretch out. You'll be able to over there to get him. So too, uh, coming across will be the winger Peter Jackson, but they don't get him into touch. With them down inside their own territory in their own quarter by a couple of metres now. This is Peter Dawes, bumped into Dowling, went back the other way. A little bit of confusion there, a South player going down also. It's Bob Kellaway. French uh, trying to find a way through there, but can't. He's just up to the winner Manly quarter line now. Dummy half waiting up there is David Green. Green turns it back over then to the blind side to Kajewski. Kajewski only getting a couple of metres before Bob Linder comes in, and so too does Eddie Muller. Green works the blind side to Lewis. Lewis got away beautifully over there, cutting through as Warren Green. Green up over the halfway, pulled down to the tackle by Peter Jackson. He's only about seven metres inside South Territory. Final tackle to Lewis, puts the boot underneath it. Grab a kick for touch, doesn't find it. And eventually uh, Southern Suburbs ending up with it. And working up there with Bob Linder to about eight metres short of the halfway mark. Muller back to Kellaway. Plenty of uh, winner manly defence going in there, Mick. Yes, and Kellaway injured his right hand there early. He's all bandaged up like a gun sin gone wrong. And uh, whether he'll last the match out, I don't know. That's Gary Grinke getting away from the first tackle, coming in through there from Coyne, or rather Green it was. From the play of the ball, Muller getting it across to Halverson now. Halverson got away from Coyne this time. But eventually put down by the lock forward in French. Muller, that's a halfway mark you can see. Sully to Meninga. Meninga's going to drive the ball down there towards Walsh. Green coming across from the wing. Walsh will take it. It's only a few metres from touch, a few metres from his own line. Decides to run but doesn't get far. 20 metres out from his own line now. Put down by Peter Jackson. This is Warren Green who had that nice run for Whittam a couple of minutes ago. David Green is dummy half. No points on the board as yet at Lang Park. Doors across over there to the front row of Coyne. Coyne still going up over the quarter line before the South defence takes a hold of him. Coming up to the first five minutes of the match so far. And it's been nice and entertaining. Nice and tough, nice and tight as you'd expect in a grand final. Dummy half is Green. He'll work across to Lewis. Lewis keeps it going. This is French. Little bit of room to move. He's away from Meninga. Has Butler outside. Gets it away to Terry Butler. Back inside to French. French has Lewis inside. This will be a try. Should be, but it's not. Pull down over there by Belcher. Oh. Lewis roaring for it inside. Oh, they blitzed that one when a man just blew it. If only they'd passed inside it. They were home and hosed under the post. Great defence from Phil Vivers. He had to chase like hell to get hold of the French. Just got in, but the pass should have gone inside. Muller to dummy half, did all the score. And eight and a half minutes of the grand final gone by. Meninga gets it away to Belcher. Belcher up over the quarter line. Cuts back inside. He's still going. He's going for that line. Pull down about a metre short of it. Double movement. And that's a good decision from the referee, David Manson. Definitely a double movement, as we will probably see on the NEC replay. Yes, he was pulled down just short of it, tried to go for that extra bit. But referee Manson right on the spot is able to... Here it is now, Gary Belcher, a great run cutting through. He Back had, he comes inside. He had the men outside and would not pass it. Now, there it is. Now, there's the double movement. No doubt about Clear that Clear as one. a bell, unfortunately. So the kick will find touch some 18 metres out from the Manly line. Coming but, uh, the sad there, Green. Billy. Very sad that he had all that support and elected to go on his own. So it's Kajewski bringing it up to the quarter line. Big chance there for Southern Suburbs. The first real opportunity for points in this match so far. That's Greg Dowling. Dummy half is Green. Back over to Mal Green. And if South stand there and wait for Wynnum to run through them, Wynnum will do that all afternoon. Peter Dawes to Lewis on the blind side. Lewis holds it up, now he accelerates. Here he goes, back inside to Ian French. He's got some toe, this fellow. He's over the quarter line. He's going for the line, tucks it out after him, gets it to Green, and there's the first try of the match. Warren Green in for the try after 10 minutes of play. Winner Manley score the first points of 4-0. Oh, beautiful work from Wally Lewis. The magic of the man. Watch him. Here he goes. He moves with the ball and they just stand and watch him. He ran past Kellaway like Kellaway was a silent cop. 
Just Ian French stretching out beautifully. Knows the support is coming. Jackson can't get to him and does then. Green gets it. Beavers comes from the other wing to nail him, but far too late. Head on or show us a pretty good shot here. There's Lewis on his way again. Through that gap, as you can see, Kellaway away to the left of him. Back inside. Now, Ian French, a lot forward, has got plenty of speed. He stretches out there, as you can see, letting go very strongly. Breaks out of the tackle. Set sail now. You'll see Peter Jackson, the winger, coming in. Jackson dives. And right at the last minute, French got it away to Warren Green. Phil Beaver's coming from the other wing in cover, but it was too late. So Warren Green is a man to kick the goal. Green... Uh, has not kicked a lot. As a matter of fact, he hasn't kicked here he kicked uh, since mid-August in A grade. He's missed that one, by the way. He's had a back injury, which has been affecting his kicking. He's also played a bit of a stint in reserve grade, but um, prior to today's match, he'd kicked 40 for the season from 62 attempts. Gives him a total of 65%. So, here at the moment at Lang Park, after 12 minutes of play, it's winner with a lead of four points to nil. We've seen a whole lot of champions in Australia on Break Arena, Australia's favourite To be a champion, you need the right sort of technological backup. Rank Arena are champions because for years they've had the experience and technology of NEC behind them. And now you'll find the NEC name right up there with Rank Arena with new ideas like high resolution picture tube for superior contrast and colour. You know Rank Arena. <laughs> now get to know NEC. It's another way to say our favourite colour TV. Tomorrow's Daily Sun has the big sport covered. The Winfield Cup Grand Final in full colour. A complete review of the James Hardy 1000, the vital Davis Cup semi-final against America, plus your three-state race guide. There's a fascinating interview with castaway author Lucy Irvine and a preview of a powerful new Australian TV series, The Last Bastion. And more numbers for Game 5 of 3 Up and Win, Queensland's easiest and richest instant win game. All in tomorrow's Go Ahead Daily Sun. Talking of tough jobs, there was this big 20-foot greenhouse, my new Mitsubishi high roof, and just me and Joe. But my Mitsubishi high roof made it a cinch. You call that tough? I had to hurry 18 models across town to a fashion show. Luckily, my Mitsubishi low roof turns on a 10-cent piece, handles really well. All right, girls, showtime. The new Mitsubishi Express vans. A tough act to follow. It's another Mitsubishi. Aquanaut, the automatic pool cleaner pre-programmed to clean your entire pool quickly, quietly and efficiently without your ever having to lift a finger. Aquanaut is programmed to make circles, left and right turns, straight runs, climbing up and down the walls, into and out of every corner. For a sparkling clean pool, Aquanaut, the new generation pool cleaner that thinks for itself. Winner Manly leading at the moment, or rather South's leading by Winner Manly, I've got it right, four points to nil. Even I'm getting rackled, Michael. No worse than those fellas in South's out there, I can assure you, Billy Boy. Peter Jackson dives on it at the back of the scrum. So it's Sully. Coming to us, Gary Belcher. Belcher's away up over the quarter line. He's being chased by Lewis. Lewis ankle taps him, but he doesn't get him. French will get him. French pulls him down. 20 metres inside Winner Manly Territory. That was a good run from Belcher. He's one of the unsung young heroes of South. And there, there's probably three players are defending, depending on. Here's the replay. Watch him go through one out. Very hard man to get hold of. Missed by two Winham players there. And has, green. Yes, and has a great... Uh, Acceleration. Look, Wally can't get to him. Gene Miles couldn't. He's a Hubie Abbott gets up to back him up, but uh, he plays it safe and takes the tackle. So that was a run that uh, Southern Suburbs needed to show a little bit of attack. Prior to that, it had been all one-way traffic, and it was all red and green going towards them. But now with Mal Meninga and a chance to register their first points on the board, Meninga hasn't kicked a great deal due to a thigh injury that he's had at various times throughout the season. He's only had 59 shots at goal, being successful with 34 of them. Gives him a percentage of 58%. He did kick four out of four of the major semi, one from three in the preliminary final last week. You know those Wynnum supporters? I think seven-eighths of the crowd is Wynnum. Here's a kick by Meninga. Let's have a look at it. It's there. 
Nick, if nothing else, the fact that Meninga's online could be something for Southern Suburbs, because when he's online, he can put him in from anywhere. <laughs> Woodham leading by four points to two. But that's not a real indication of the two teams at the moment, Nick, I don't feel. No, Wyndham have had the better of play. 10-0 would be a better score line favouring Wyndham. Muller back over there to Grenke. There's a couple of those South forwards haven't been sighted yet in the ruck. Let's Gary they... Belcher decides to have a kick this time. Brian Walsh is over there. And he'll take this one again, start to move. Doesn't get away from Bob Lindner though. And Peter Jackson's in for the wing to make sure he doesn't do what he did last time. About to play it. David Green from dummy half has a little run himself. Doesn't go too far, though. Warren Green is dummy half this time. Over to Doors. Outside then to French. That's Ian French to lock forward. Brushed away a couple of tackles that were nothing much. Pulled down just short of the halfway mark. Dummy half is David Green. Back over to Doors to Lewis. Inside the coin, bumped into Kerr, but eventually grabbed over there by Halverson. And Kerr also uh, became involved in the tackle. Gene Miles. Big Gino up over halfway, still going. Oh, it's picked up beautifully this time by Green. Green back inside to David Green, and David Green will score underneath the post. Beautifully picked up there by Mel Green, the second rower. What beautiful day. As you by Wynnum Manley. I must admit, Big Gino took off, left three of them, drew in four of them actually, and that was beautifully picked up by the uh, second rower. Belcher went for the intercept, and David Green, the hooker, and captain, over under the post. Very, very good try for Wynnum Manley. Here's Gene Miles now, you'll see him on the way through, out of one, two tackles, held up, just pops it out, and Green came through and scooped down and got it up. There's Meninga out after him. Draws Belcher. Belcher had to have a go at something, so he went to try and knock it down. But David Green is over for the try. Underneath the post, and Wyndham opened up a lead of eight points to two, which, when Warren Green is finished, should become ten points to two. Well, they're certainly making inroads up the centre of South's ruck. That was just a normal play the ball, pick it up, and run. Fundamentals of rugby league, and South's are just not at home. And some of those forwards... As Wyndham had the extra two points, should not be on the field. So Warren Green converts a try. Woodham leading South by ten points to two. Ryan Walsh back there again, ever dependable, takes it up. Just saw a shot of um, Des Morris, the Woodham captain. He seems to be on pretty good terms with himself. You can't say you blame him, do you, Mick? Well, a, a grand final, 11 minutes to go till half time, and he's leading 10 2 and idling. I'd say he'd have to be happy. Here's Lewis on the go again. Props. Gets it back to Ian French. French put down about five metres short of the halfway mark. He'll play it to Gene Miles as dummy half. Miles back over there to Doors, outside to Green. Green away then to Green. Mal Green, he's away again. Up over halfway. This should be another try. They've got players. Oh! He set it a well away from Terry Butler. Cut back inside. He's away from Beavers. Could still be a try. Butler pulled out about five metres out. Oh, they're carving south up. But there's been a forward pass. Pass out there to Butler on the wing. South Mick have missed 17 tackles. Winner missing six. That Seven. tells the story. That's a story in a grand final. It means they don't have the heart to win and they don't want to go on with it. Here's Green again. Gee, there were players everywhere there, weren't there? That's the one to Butler. Real forward. Butler kept on going. So now we'll wait for it to go in again. Brad Sully to feed the scrum. Referee Manson bringing them across over in centre field a few more metres. I'm wondering where Huey Abbott has been all this time in that back line. Wyndham seems to be running at random. Sully over to Halverson. Halverson dummies. He tricked Lewis, but he didn't trick uh, French coming across in cover defence. Away from dummy half is Belcher. Belcher put down 10 metres short of the halfway mark. 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Sully to Lumby. There's a player we haven't seen too much of in this first half, Ash Lumby. Winner Manley leading by 10 points to two. This is Kerr to Sully. Kellaway. Kellaway. Put down there. Kajewski is the man underneath. And Greg Dowling over the top. Muller from dummy half. 
to Sally. Meninga. Meninga downfield again. Warren Green going back to cut it off. And he picks it up nicely. Back into the in goal area. Starts to move. Running across field. Halverson comes at him. He gets away from Halverson. He's on his own, I might add. And eventually put to the ground some 18 metres out from his own line. Downing from dummy half to Lewis. Touched by the opposition, so there's another six tackles up there. Winham almost up onto their own quarter. David Green to Kajewski. Kajewski tackled over there this time. The man getting across to put him down will be Bob Lindner. This is Green. Mal Green. David Green, dummy half. Warren Green out on the wing, hoping to get into it. This is Dowling, busts it up the centre. The big second rower striding out, pulled out from behind, trying to get the pass to Dawes. But he lost it, Abbott will end up with it. Dowling there to grab a hold of him. Oh, he just walked past Abbott there on that occasion, walked past him. Ash Lumby, the man with the ball. About to play it, Muller the dummy half. Sully. Back inside to Kellaway. Kellaway striding up the centre, still going. He's up at the quarter. Only has the full back to beat. Waltz is hanging on to him. And Butler comes across. Lewis there to cut it off. Dummy half Beninga. Kicked away. And it's a winning ball. Souths lose their chance. So close to the line. Getting up to play at this time is Gene Miles. Wally Lewis. Lewis, eight metres out from his own line. Big run there by Killaway. That's the fastest I've seen Bob Killaway uh, move for a long time. He was on his own though, Mick. There was no one in support. He had to just try and do it all himself. But here they go again. This is French. Away to Warren Green. Has he got the pace now? Sully is coming at him. Sully pulls him down a few metres inside South Territory. He'll get up to play it. Dummy half this time is Dawes. Dawes gets away from Muller. Clears it. Oh, they're making it look good. This is David Green trying to find a gap. But he's put to the ground with a final tackle away. A few metres inside South Territory. Dummy half up there is Coyne. Back to Miles. Miles strolling his way through. Pulled down there by Kerr. That's the end of the tackle count. David Green to dummy half. With him in front, 10 to 2. Lewis got a bit of a bump to the back, I think, in that tackle. Doors. Outside then to Coin. Coin unloads it back to Dawes. Then away to Waltz. Waltz deciding to run. Now away to French. French away to Butler. Butler's on his own. Butler's going to send a kick because he can see Waltz coming through there. Belch is back there. He goes up for it. Waltz crashes into him. Then Ankle taps him. And eventually they'll grab him about just inside the quarter line. But a knock on. Good refereeing once again from David Manson. He allowed the uh, advantage to take place there. Here's... French running away. I tell you what, French hasn't seen so much open paddock since he was up on the farm. Good work from uh, Butler to put it in field. He disappears out of play. And well done, Belcher, to take that. Two fullbacks confronting each other on that occasion. Here's him on the go again. That's Warren Green. Pulled it down nicely. He's cutting back inside. And Warren Green eventually held up some 18 metres out from the south line. Wooden putting on the pressure again. Warren Green plays it back to Gene Miles, takes a one hand away from Dummy Half, strolls his way out of a couple of tackles, put down about eight metres out from the south line. Could be big trouble again. David Green from Dummy Half, over to Dowling. Dowling crashing his way for the line. He's oh so close, but just forced back there by Meskell. He'll play it. Dummy Half, David Green. Winham roaring up again. Played forward by Dowling and a try. Played it forward, led over, put his hand on it and a try. shot birds as you will see Dowling makes a rush for the line is knocked over and held nicely and strongly now there's all the defenses around him here watch and he just kicks it forward and says how about that and south are shot birds let's have a look at the head on now you'll see it coming up here that is Dowling crashing towards the line. He went very close. Mesco was the last line of defence to hold him up. But now watch him from the play of the ball from here. Dowling with players all around him, still trying to find his feet. He eventually does. This will show it very well. He's got Ash Lumby in front of Samarco. Well, he's only half up. He just turned it forward, leaned across, put the big hand on it, and said, thank you very much, I'll have four points. And that's what he got. I'll tell you what, there's another two on the way. Ready, ready to go. Now it's Southern Suburbs coming onto the field. No changes to the South line up at the half-time break. 
Would you have made some changes, Mick? Well, I don't think he's got. He has anywhere to go, as uh, Wayne Bennett. I've, I must admit it. I've, I've been very disappointed in Grinky, so he's replaced him with Mark Meskell. But Ash Lumby, the second row, I haven't seen Ash all day. He's uh, he's had a couple of runs, but I tell you what, he's missed plenty of tackles in this first half. And this fellow here, Hubie Abbott, has. Uh, has not been in the defensive position all day. I don't know uh, what he thinks he is, but he's uh, he's in no man's land. OK, there's a kick-off for the second half, and it's Gary Coyne, the winner manly front row. The man to put it into action, taken back there by Beavers. Beavers eventually back to Belcher, and then across to Brad Sully. Sully's going to be wrapped up over here, uh, about 10 metres out from his own line. He'll get up to play it now. This is Mal Meninga putting his head down, bustling his way through. I should imagine Wayne Bennett would have had plenty to say to this team at halftime. One thing would be to do um, a little bit of tackling, particularly there on the forwards. This is Mark Meskell. Fundamentals of the game is to knock them over, Bill. And if you don't knock them over, well, you're not going to be in it. Brad Sully sends it back over there this time to Kelvin Kerr. Kerr put down just on the quarter line. Half-time lead for Winter Manley of 16 points to two. Meninga's going to put the boot underneath it. That wind at this stage is blowing downfield. Uh, it does, so they're wanting into it, Souths. It does change about a bit as it uh, whirls around these grandstands. We've seen it change quite dramatically on occasions, Mick. This is Wally Lewis. Lewis up to the halfway mark. Has Kellaway and Meskell there. He got one in the... He got one, too, from Meskell. David Green let go. Tell you what, Meskell stood his ground, too. Quite noticeable. There was only two blokes there, South. Here it goes on the replay. Uh, Meskell goes in. Kellaway's got all the wall now. Somewhere around about here, bang, there it is. Yes. It's the left-hand elbow from Meskell. But uh, they just sort of hold on. Here's the head-on of it again. So there's Wally Lewis on. That's Kellaway grabs him first. Meskell coming in now. So they've held him up. And the next second you'll see Meskell come around with that left elbow. Boom. And Walter eventually takes a kick for touch so it's winter manly putting on pressure down on the quarter line again so from this planned move who ends up with a green gets it across to dowling he goes without it halverson cutting back halverson thrown to the ground by wally lewis right on the quarter line he'll get up to play it now halverson injured in the tackle as he was thrown very heavily there by lewis muller is the dummy half lewis uh, tries to rake it back and he succeeds now, I can see that Halverson wasn't 100%, Mick. Muller was telling him to quickly play it, but he couldn't quickly play it, and Lewis uh, raked it back, so uh, Winner Manley have got possession again. Oh, a child against a man out there this afternoon. Halverson will remember this game. David Green fighting it, Dowling kicking it across field. It's still OK. Brian Walsh will pick it up, and this will be a gift try. Walsh in for an absolute gift of a try. Have a look on the replay at the defence pattern of South. Now, that was the only defence. There, there's just no one there. There is no one there except the winger. And actually, he came very late. I tell you what, they're all having a bit of a sleep in the grandstand. Now, if you watch this, it's a, it's a big, long, loose pass. Dowling sees he can't get a hold of it, so he bangs it across field. So it, it comes across to Waltz. There's Meninga, but uh, it's too late now. Waltz is gone. There he is. And uh, Sully's there very, very late on the scene. But, but it was Dowling. Something, oh, in the world, he could pull it down. So I decided, bang, I'll give it a whack. Sent it across, and Waltz had green outside of him and thought there were two Christmases coming at once. So. Well, whatever Bennett said at half time, they're either not listening to him or they don't have the ability to do so. Or he didn't tell them. There's three options there, Bill. None of them very nice for Southern Suburbs. But, oh, dear me. This is a terrible pounding for Southern Suburbs. Here's Warren Green attempting to convert the try to way to the right-hand side of the uprights. So at this stage, we're just coming into four minutes of play in the second half. There's Morris, the coach of Winner Manley. Should feel very, very confident at this stage. On the idle, Winner Manley. So uh, it's Mal Meninga restarting play. Back down there to Gene Miles. Miles will run it out up to the quarterway. Ash Lumby and Mark Meskell, the tacklers. Dummy half is David Green. Green to send it across over there to Mal Green. 
who's been pretty prominent in attack for Winner Manly today, but then just about everybody has. Tony Kajewski. Now there's a run that's gained about 15 metres. So to Doors. Doors outside then to Lewis. Back to Doors. They can do what they like. Doors away this time to Mal Green. Green tackled right on the halfway mark. David Green dummy half. Lewis. Miles Dowling. He uh, loves this now. He's going to stay out in the back line all the time. This is Brian Walsh. Touched by the opposition, so there's another six tackles. Walsh up ended over there by Hubie Abbott, a couple of metres inside South Territory. Dummy half, Jerry Butler. Butler over to Dowling. Dowling still going. That's terrible defence in the grand final. Absolutely pathetic. Doors getting it back to Ian French. French working across field, popped it up to Lewis. Lewis back inside, then to Coyne. Coyne, can he get it away? He's still going. Eventually, Halverson puts him down. 24 metres out from the south line, and it's all one-way traffic. Red and green straight up there towards the southern end of the field. And there'll be a lot more of it, I feel, before the day's out. This is David Green, Widow Manley captain, over to Doors, outside to Lewis. Lewis decides to run, now gets it around the corner. Walsh will lose it, though. French is out after it, but uh, to being well and truly knocked on, so we'll have a scrum. Peter Doors, by the way, Mick, will be best man for Brian Batiste. Canterbury Bankstown player formerly well he played with Wyndham when they won the grand final in 82 he's getting married up here in mid-October there's Wayne Bennett he couldn't care about any wedding at this stage it's a funeral he's at <laughs> and he I don't think he'll turn up for the wake so now it's uh, southern suburbs yes um, he'll be the best man for Brian Batiste I think it's October 13 so that'll be a big wedding two grand two premiership wins to celebrate and uh, and the wedding Probably we should have said the wedding first, but still. This is Mark Baskell. Yes, I'm out of order there. Particularly with a young lady concerned, I guess. So now, here's Sully. Sully up over the quarter line. And did you see on that occasion, not one Southern Suburbs player willing to run off Sully. Eddie Muller, dummy half. Back over there to Mel Meninga. Meninga. Just gets it over the halfway mark. Warren Green going back. He's got a bit of time to spare. Hubie Abbott at him, puts an arm out, but Abbott somehow gets him into the ground. Ends up on top of him, I know that. Brian Walsh, back over to Lewis, deciding to have a bit of a run, unloads it this time to Peter Dawes. Dawes up over halfway, he's got plenty of support too. He props, he cuts back inside, is picked up by Brad Sully. Well, the cover was getting there. Dowling decides to go himself. Ooh, he was almost going to let it go there to Coyne, who would have been offside. Instead, he'll go to ground. Play it back to David Green. This is Dawes to Lewis. Lewis outside, then to Mal Green. Oh, it's lost by Gene Miles. Picked up by Hubie Abbott, who was holding a hold of Miles when he was going for the ball. Abbott around the corner. We picked up there by Bob Linder. Linder losing it in the tackle. Ball rolling loose. South regather. Only just, but they're there. Kajewski was trying to go for the ball, but referee Manson was in his road. But now it's Eddie Muller injured in that tackle. Referee calling for time off. Eddie Muller played for Brisbane this year, of course, in the National Panasonic Cup final. Here it is again. This is um, Hubie Abbott. Abbott is grabbed, threw it around the corner. Bob Lindner was there. Lindner is tackled by Ian French, the opposite number for winner. The ball rolling loose. Now there's Eddie Muller going in. And coming in over the top there is Mel Green. Nothing untoward. No. Too much wrong there. So here's South with it, and Phil Beaver's on the blind side. Ten metres inside, Wynnum Territory. Bobby Lindner. Dummy half this time is Muller, who seems to have recovered. He goes the blind side, skirting his way through, still going. Put down 20 metres out from the Wynnum Manly line. Wynnum's lead at the moment is 20 points to two. Sully, back over to Halverson, then to Meninga. Meninga head down, but he gets over the quarter line, lost the ball on the tackle. Wynnum Manly ball. Getting up to play it is David Green. Dowling away from dummy half. David Green dummy this time to Doors. Doors outside to Kajewski. Kajewski put to the ground in the tackle of Kellaway. The stage, nine minutes of the second half gone. Winham already in for another try. Peter Doors was too busy trying to direct players to uh, be ready for the ball to come out to him. So as a result, David Green won on his own. Dowling, Gene Miles, 
Miles wrapped up, slipped it back to Dowling. Then away to Dawes. There's a bit of trouble coming up too, if he can get it moving. He's still going, working away from a lot of them. And eventually put down 10 metres short of the halfway mark with the final tackle on the way. David Green is dummy half. Green back over there to Gene Miles. Miles trying to find touch, but Gary Belcher is back there. Belcher deciding to run it out. Belcher put over about 15 metres short of the halfway mark. Still in South Territory. That's where they've spent most of their time. Hubie Abbott. Yes, underneath their goalpost. <laughs> South, that is. This is Muller as dummy half. A couple of metres. Just gets over the halfway mark before he's put down. Crowd has gone fairly quiet now, Mick. I think it's an anti-climax from here on in. Sully getting it back inside to you're, Kerr. You're definitely not wrong. Dummy half up there, Muller. Back on the bounce to Halverson. Coming back inside. Put to the ground on the halfway mark. Dummy half, Gary Belcher with a final tackle. This is Mal Meninga. Meninga drives it downfield. Warren Green going back there to recover, which he does. He has Brian Waltz with him. Decides to step out a bit. Kellaway tackles him. Meninga over the top. They put him down on the quarter line. Walsh is dummy half. This is Lewis. Running it out. But the tackle coming in from Kerr. Quickly away from dummy half. David Green back inside of Kaduski. David Green dummy half. Lewis. Miles. Miles. Over to French. This is trouble. Over the halfway. Terry Butler outside. Beavers has a go. Now to Butler. Butler's on his own. He cuts back inside. He's looking for support. French is back onto his feet and French is going to score in the corner. And that's as neat as try as you'd want to see. Big Gene Miles stretching straight through. I'd already nominated that they were going to be out there. Mal Meninga wasn't home. Hubie Abbott wasn't home again. Tell you what, they've got walkabout. Beavers had to come in. That leaves Butler with plenty of room to move. He wrong foots Ash Lumby and then gives it to the man who's got up off the ground, Brett French, who's round and over. Well, I tell you what, Mick, I had to look twice. I thought it was French first up, but I thought it couldn't be. He'd been knocked to the ground, but that'll give you an idea of how much uh, time Butler had to go, because there's French, and he's one of truly put to the ground in the tackle. So Butler says, I'll have a bit of a run now. Gary Belcher said, where in the world are you going to go? Butler cuts back that way, and blow me down. Here's French on the way. Brett French powering across for the try. Lumby dies at him at the end, but it's too late. It's all over. And win a manly in for another one and have a lead of 24 points to two. So Warren Green attempting to convert the try. And we're only 12 minutes into the second half. I'm amazed, Mick, that a player could be tackled, get up, and still score a try. And he was well tackled, too. So Warren Green attempting to convert this one. He's failed, so the score at Lang Park remains. Wynnum leading by 24 points to two. Catch a Tiger deal wearing Beach Motor Seal. And if it's a used car you're after, this is where the action is. Leech Motor's used cars, Windsor and Chermside, for the greatest Tiger deal in town. All this weekend, the softies have been stock-taking, finding hundreds of incredible bargains for 12 noon tomorrow when the doors blast open on a fantastic stock-take sellout. Portable colour TVs from $299, video recorders from $465, hundreds of genuine savings from every corner of every warehouse, two-door family fridges from only $449, automatic toasters only $18.95. It's Errol Stewart's fantastic stock-take sellout. Be there when the doors blast open 12 noon tomorrow. Tomorrow's Daily Sun has the big sport covered. The Winfield Cup Grand Final in full colour. A complete review of the James Hardy 1000, the vital Davis Cup semi-final against America, plus your three-state race guide. There's a fascinating interview with castaway author Lucy Irvine and a preview of a powerful new Australian TV series, The Last Bastion. And more numbers for Game 5 of 3-Up and Win. 
Queensland's easiest and richest instant win game. All in tomorrow's Go Ahead Daily Sun. Watch closely. Screw it. Blow lamp. Screw it. Picnic stove. Screw it. Lantern. Screw it. Table lamp. The secret is this little disposable interchangeable butane gas cartridge. Lasts for three to six hours depending on the appliance used. It's called Tamar. Available now at leading hardware outlets. Tamar. Another quality product from Zenith. The peak of perfection. So, back onto the halfway mark. Andrew, where are you going? Mal Meninga. He's off to England during the week, Mick, to take up his contract over there. He would have wished by this stage that he would have left last week. Yes, I'd say so. He, uh, oh, and there's Dowling starting to work up to a pretty good head of speed. Meninga just having a bit of a go with uh, Brian Dawes, or Peter Dawes. But yes, you're right. Uh, he wished this game was over long ago. This is Coyne. Coyne away on the halfway mark through some terrible defence again to the ground midway between the quarter and halfway. Should never have got through there. Oh, Halverson and just patted him on the way through and so did Bob Kellaway. They just don't want any part of them. Lewis with a long one to Jerry Butler. Butler pulled to the ground over there by Maskell. Dummy half David Green. With him on the rampage again. They're 30 metres out. Lewis back to David Green. Oh, they're having fun, these fellows. This is Ian French. French almost to the quarter line before he's put down the final tackle. Back over to Dawes. Doors sends a pass back along the ground, picked up by Brian Walsh. There's plenty of room now. He puts it up. He's going to follow out after it. Belcher is back there. Belcher takes it in the in goal area. Can he get out? Yes, he can. He's still going, as a matter of fact. Belcher breaking away. He's up over the quarter line. He cuts back inside, but Doors is there with a tackle, and so too is French. But no one backing him up. He's played a great game, Belcher. On a beaten side, he's been one of the pick. Well, he's the only player that's broken the line. Really? And he's the only player having a bit of a go, too, I might add. So this is Sully, sending it across over there to Bob Lindner. Who's had a particularly quiet game, hasn't been sighted today. Dummy half is Muller, back to Sully Meninga. He puts the boot underneath it again. Maybe the thinking is here, if you're going to score tries, win them, we'll make you run a bit further to get them. Well, it's one tactic. I don't know whether it'll work. Lewis back over there to French. Got away from Meskell's tackle, got away from the next one, that of Lindner, up over the halfway. Back it comes this time to Green. Green gets away from Abbott's tackle. The pass rolls loose, it'll be picked up by Wenham. If it wasn't so serious, it'd be, it'd be laughable, wouldn't it, some of that defence? So this is Kajewski. Meninga had a go at him, then had another go. He bounced off the first one. <laughs> at least Mal's having a bit of a go. Still haven't got this. <laughs> Still haven't got David Green down as yet. Now doors to Lewis. Lewis, the long one. Brian Walsh into the back line. Then away to Terry Butler. Butler back inside. This is Lewis. Lewis got away. Then to Miles and Miles is in. Gene Miles in for another one. And the procession continues. Great football win of Manly. Wally Lewis, the long one, to that man, Walsh. I told you he could play great football. Butler hardly touched his fingers and he shot it back inside to that man, Wally. And there's Big Gino, who's been following Wall all this year. And it's born fruit again. Here's Brian Walsh coming into it again. Sends a pass outside to Terry Butler. Butler back inside. There's Lewis, crunching into the tackle coming in from Linda and Muller. Then away to Gene Miles. Tackle by Sully on the line, but he broke out of that one. And is in for yet another try. It's try number six for Wyndham Manley. And they're racking up a cricket score. It's 28 to 2. Tell you what, uh, they'd be very uh, disappointed, Southern Suburbs, or their supporters would be. South's not doing too much. There's Wayne Bennett. Uh, I wonder what thoughts are running through his mind. Self-destruction or some sort of Harry Carey, Bill? <laughs> I think he might be hoping they bring in mercy killing. <laughs> anyway, that's the way it goes. Here's a kick by Warren Green. Is there. And that is rubbing it in. 30 points to two. What a manly lead. 
Warren Green running back, feeling pretty happy with himself out of that one. They made them fairly wide for him today, but he's kicked three out of six. You see the magpies, uh, the seagulls pick the magpies. I think the magpies are plucked. Their feathers are uh, absolutely falling out. So here's Downing chasing it, but eventually lets it go back there to Brian Walsh. Walsh running it out to about 10 metres out from his own line. David Green from dummy half. David Green will play it. Dawes is the dummy half this time. Over there to Mal Green, who's done plenty of running today for Winner Manly. Well, they all have. So here's Bolly Lewis driving it downfield. It'll be left to Peter Jackson, the winger, and uh, Gary Belcher to come across. Belcher's going to take it. Belcher running it out. Stepping through quite solidly, but put down about 30 metres out from his own line. Just stuck down to Wally. He was really going for a hit on Belcher there. Jackson. Tackler over there is the front rower, Coyne. He'll play it. Muller to Sully. Sully lost by Kerr and going to be knocked on there by Dowling. Double knock on. So a scrum 10 metres inside South Territory. Still have 21 and a half minutes to go. Bruce Harry coming on. And I'd say Halverson, the man to leave. Yes. Yes, he is. So Halverson off, Sully, uh, Harry on. Now, Bruce Harry is uh, a regular A grader in the SARS lineup, but he played in the reserve grade grand final today. His experience uh, is one thing that maybe Wayne Bennett could have done within this grand final, but it's all right to say it now. That's Dowling. Yes, uh, no use closing the gate after the horses have bolted, the whole 13 of them. So Green back inside then to Coyne. Coyne held up 30 metres out from the south line, dummy half David Green. This is Kajewski. Oh, he's through again, up over the quarter line, pushing away Meskell, sends a pass back inside, David Green dives on it. A little bit touch and go, that one, Mick. Yes. Lewis, long one again, French, lost the ball in the tackle, still going about. Meninga dives on it, it'll be a south ball. And they're in all sorts of trouble, South Mick, when you have a look at them just on fitness-wise here. Um, they're all just standing there at this stage. Yes, Wally and Mal, have, oh, they're having a real good shot at each other. Mal and Wall. Back over to Eddie Muller. Muller inside, this is Kelvin Kerr. Winham's lead is 30 points to two. Harry. Oh, it's going to be knocked away. Belcher ends up with it. Belcher having another run. Gary Belcher pulled down 20 metres short of the halfway mark. Dummy half is Eddie Muller. Muller to Sully on the blind side. Then to Peter Jackson. Not sure what he's doing over there, Mick. Is he roaming or is Phil Beavers? One of them is. Two wingers on the one side. Here's a kick through. This is Warren Green. I think Peter Jackson's doing the roving. Green straight ahead. Abbott comes in with the tackle, takes him ball and all. Yes, Jackson is the man. He's due over this side. Brian Walsh is dummy half. 19 and a half minutes remaining in the grand final. Dummy half is Kajewski. Couple of metres short of the halfway mark. Green to Mal Green. That's Warren Green to Mal Green. And David Green coming in as dummy half. If you're tired of hearing the name, try talking about it all the time. <laughs> Green again. Or Gary Coyne, rather, this time. Well, I can't remember such a drubbing to a team. It'll be interesting to see if Souths can cross Wynnum's line. The way they're going, they don't have a ghost of a chance. There's Wally Lewis putting it up nice and high. Gary Belcher back there, takes it. He runs up over the quarter line. Ooh, runs into Lewis coming in over the top. He didn't miss him that time. And the man in underneath was Brett French. But Belcher plays it. This is Muller. Eddie Muller sends it away to Peter Jackson. Jackson cutting back inside. He'll be picked up by Kajewski. The pass rolls loose. That's Bob Kellaway. Kellaway up the centre. Now he unloads it. This is Eddie Muller again. Muller put over midway between the quarter and halfway. It's down in South Territory still. They haven't seen much of uh, the Winham's half of the field. Harry inside to Melbourne Inga. Taken head on by Coyne. Over the top goes David Green. 
Linda the dummy half. Sully reverses. This is Bruce Harry. Abbott. Abbott taken by Gene Miles. Phil Viva's dummy half. Kick by Gary Belcher. Viva's another of the players. Mick, that's off during the week. I think he leaves on Tuesday to go to England. Yes, that's Gary Belcher we see uh, framed. He can hold his head up today. And yes, uh, Vivas is going away. Young player. He's another fellow who hasn't really put a foot wrong today. He's had a lot of <laughs> red and green guns. He's running at him. This is Brian Wilds up the centre again. 25 Queenslanders. I think there's 60 from Australia going to England in the off-season. 25 Queenslanders. There's a few over there already and a lot going this week. So this is Dawes. Dummy half is David Green. Kajewski up to the quarter line. 17 minutes remaining in the match. And winner with a big lead of 30 to 2. And no, no reason why uh, the crowd should cheer. I think it's, well, as I said before, it's an anti climax. They've had enough. Except Wyndham fans wouldn't mind 50, I guess. This is Brian Walsh. Got away from a flying attempt there at tackle by Bob Linder. Eventually put to the ground just inside the quarter line and the final tackle's on its way. So back it goes then to Wally Lewis. Oh, Lewis had a drop shot at field goal. That would have been rubbing it in, Michael. Yes. Uh, actually, they're just slowing it down to their place. Winner Manly. They don't have to worry about too much. 30 to 2, 16 minutes to go. And uh, one of the more pathetic grand finals that I've had the mispleasure of having a look at. This is Bob Kellaway getting up to play it now. Muller is the dummy half. Back over to Lumby. Lumby breaks away from the tackle back there by Coyne. Lewis comes in to take him. Ball and all bumps him heavily. Eventually gets him down. David Green is a man underneath. About to play it five metres short of halfway. Sully back over there to Harry. Harry is put to the ground about eight metres short of the halfway mark. Ian French has left the field for Winner Manley. Breaking through this time is Gary Belcher. He's been doing it all day. He's up over the quarter line. Waltz goes high, knocks the ball out of his hands, and Lewis will dive on top of it. So with French going from the field, young Morgan is on. Here's the replay. And uh, Belcher, who's worked his tail off today for Southern Suburbs, is knocked by Walsh. Wally was just running along and cleans it up nicely. As we see, big Gene Miles giving it out to Brad Morgan. Brad Morgan is on, and uh, that means that he'll go to fullback, of course, and uh, Brian Walsh will come into the lock forward position. By the way, for our Sydney viewers, I might remember Lionel Morgan, a, a winger for Queensland who played for Australia. That's his son out there in Brad Morgan. He's played a few A-grade games this year. He's, he's pretty light, Mick, but he'll come along fairly well, I think. Oh, he's a cl he's good, classy footballer, but uh, yes, his stature is a little bit against him. He's got to put on a bit of weight. Back inside this time to Peter Dawes. Dawes breaking away. He's looking for Kajewski who cuts back inside. Kajewski motors onto it. It goes around the corner. Kerr misses it. Rolling on the ground. Picked up by David Green. Play on with another six tackles. Green running right across field and eventually put over right in front of the goalpost and only about eight metres out. Dummy half this time is Coyne. Running at will when a man lean. Walsh. Walsh stepping around. Still trying. Oh, it's going to be lost over there by Coyne. Lost by Coyne, but that's going to be... A, he was held back. Penalty. Yes, and two more points. Actually, if I was Wally, I think I'd be taking a quick tap and putting four more points on the board because South don't seem to have the defence to hold them out anywhere. But he's going to give his team a bit of a spell. And, uh, yes... No, he's going to take no. the tap. Puts his head down and dies for the line. Can he get it down? Yes, he can. He's got it down. That's a try. Well, he wasn't giving it, as you see on the replay. Now, watch Green. He walks in and puts his hands up in the air, but he's not saying anything. A pretty good ploy, and then away he goes. Three to one, and South still can't hold him out. Well, uh, the head-on will give us a good idea of the battle he would have had to ground that ball. But he did it so quickly, the boys up there uh, weren't quite with him. 
Well, that's uh, really rubbing it in, I think, that one, Michael. Yes, well, I thought he would go for that. I was quite surprised that it wasn't Lewis that took the ball, but uh, David Green, the captain, said if Wally can do it in the interstate games or in the Australian games, I'll have a little go at it, and it worked in the club game. When a manly trainer is out on the field at the moment, Lewis has obviously had something to say because referee Manson is calling him out. There's South in the in-goal area. There's Lewis being spoken to by referee Manson. Obviously, uh, Wally's had something to say at some stage. I thought the referee was having a go at the Winner Manly trainer being out on the field. But he was calling for Lewis. You can see another replacement coming on shortly for Winner Manly. Everyone might as well get a run. Kick is going to be successful. So Wyndham have a lead here at Lang Park of 36 points to two. You get more when you shop the Traxxons way. You get a little extra in every way. Traxxons are doing the right thing for you. The right thing? This Hoover dishwasher, just $449. The Toshiba microwave, only $179. And this 270-litre auto defrost fridge, $399 with trade. That's proof. Traxxons are doing the right thing, doing the right thing for you. Introducing Tropicals, the natural cotton shorts that keep you cool when the temperature rises. Tropicals by King G. They keep you cool when the temperature rises. Some of this country's greatest achievers have also been its quietest. Achievers who found great success through sheer determination and quiet persistence. The kind of determination that helped harness the power of the sun. And the kind of persistence that is bringing the gas of the Northwest Shelf into the lives of thousands of Australians. You don't always hear about what a quiet achiever is doing, but you'll often feel the effects. BP Australia, the quiet achiever. Hello. Melissa, hold on. Would you check it again? The problem. Okay. It has to be there, on time, or else. Let's check that. They said they'll be here in ten no. minutes. You could hop on a plane and deliver it yourself. Yeah. Or call Wards. Tell him it's with Wards. It'll be there. When you can't deliver it yourself, send it Wards Express. Best on the ground, best in the air. It's as good as there. <laughs> they got it! You beauty. So now there's the score line. This is young Morgan. Morgan taking it up over the quarter line. Bob Kellaway leaving the field for Souths. And it'll be Gibson coming on for him. Doug Gibson. Just under 12 minutes remaining in the match. That is Gary Coyne. As we see Ash Lumby miss another tackle. I'd love to know the individual tackle counts for these fellows. Gene Miles back inside to David Green. Green put over about eight metres short of the halfway mark. He'll get up to play it now. Dummy half is doors. That is Kajewski back inside to Lewis. He sends it away then to Coyne. Away they go. This is French. Up over the halfway mark. He's stretching out as French. He's, he's going to score himself. He's only got Belcher to beat, but he slips over. Gets up. Can't get it back inside to Dowling. He was bowled over like by Melvin Inga coming from behind. Look at the but scoreboard, he, says Dowling. <laughs> Dowling just looked at him and said, have a look at the scoreboard and see how you're going. This is Coyne. Coyne up into them. I thought French might have had enough toe there, but he tried to step back inside of the winger of the fullback Belcher and just lost his footing. So this is Mark Meskell. Who we must uh, congratulate. He's played another steady game for South, but he was brought on far too late to stop the rot. That's Gibson there. Dummy half is Muller. Ball running into it is Bob Lindner. Ball roll loose. And it was Green able to stand up and get the way then to Dawes. Dawes back inside to Lewis. Lewis crashing through. And here's another one. Lewis over underneath the post. And Winner Manley hit.
it for 40 points. And as you see on the replay, look at that for terrible defence. Wally took off, he was flat-footed before he saw the man with the ball needed a bit of support, and away he went. Here's a head-on shot now. There's Green standing up in the tackle. That was after Linda lost it. Total confusion there with Sars. This is Peter Dawes. Back inside to Lewis. Away from Sully's tackle. Striding out. No one in sight. And Lewis in for try number eight for Winner Manley. And the route continues. So Warren Green with one right in front of the post. And the 50 points is a real possibility now with nine and a half minutes remaining. 40 to 2. I don't think I've seen that ever in a grand final. And as you say, Bill, it mightn't be over yet. Wayne Bennett. Totally disconsolate there. Yes, I believe he'd be hoping there's to be a trap door in that little shed over there that would just open up. We might get a... There's a kick converted. So it's 42 to 2. get a shot there shortly at the winner Manly camp which would be there's Des Morris Mal Green has left the field and Wayne Bullock is on for winner Manly there is Morris and also over there in the winner Manly box will be Colin Scott he must be one of the most he'd probably be as dejected as um, as Wayne Bennett at least he's with the winning team I guess that's the only difference because he would dearly love to be out there so at Lang Park there's eight and a half minutes to go that's Bullock Placement player for Mal Green, the second rower. Mick, you have a player of the match to work out here too. $200 worth of Canterbury gear. And also from NEC, a System 21 stereo. And the very best of luck. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bill. The unfortunate thing is, Mick, the first time our grand final has gone live to Sydney and the folks have to be struck with this. However... Yes, it's a little sad. Uh... And I suppose uh, you people down there in Sydney watching it, if you haven't switched it off already, and I know we don't want you doing that, uh, we are the team that, or the side or the state that can put a team together that can uh, uh, bowl you over in the interstate series. But it must make you wonder. Where do they come from? If you that's look at right. This. However, South end up with a penalty here. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the match. Brad Sully is down injured in the background for Souths. Muller takes a tap away to Bruce Harry. Harry outside to Bob Lindner. Lindner put over about 25 metres out from the Winter Manly line. Dummy half this time is Muller. Ooh, that is Peter Jackson trying to take it up, but he didn't get far. Dummy half is Eddie Muller getting up close to the Winham quarter. The only interest now, Mick, is whether Souths can score a try. And they haven't shown us enough to suggest that they would. They just haven't shown us anything, Bill. Anything at all. Coming through is Bob Linder. Linder put to the ground about 10 metres out now from the Winter Manly line. People starting to leave. You can understand why. Just under seven minutes remaining. A scoreline of 42 to 2. Can South get it here? They've got players to burn. Meninga, the pass rolls loose. Vivas can't, get, can't pick it up. And they had a couple of men over. Scrum about to back down. Ten metres out from the winner Manly line. 42 to 2. Doors waiting to feed this scrum. Cross to Lewis. Lewis outside to Morgan. Morgan cuts inside from Meninga, but picked up over there by Linder in cover. Dummy half is Bullock out to Lewis. Lewis sends it wide. Gene Miles lost his footing a bit and Abbott came in over the top. That's the first time I think Abbott's uh, tackled. Miles, Miles today. Miles was going to try and play it forward. There was no marker. Abbott grabbed him by the or rather Lumby. Abbott grabbed him by the foot and gave away a penalty. So it's uh, what a manly to kick for touch. Crowd in the other starting to chant. We want 50. Five and a half minutes to go. You're a fair chance, folks. 
so it's David Green back over there to Kajuski. Kajuski up to about a couple of metres short of the halfway mark. He uh, lost it. Didn't play it correctly, says the referee. A penalty to South. I might start uh, going through the scoring, Michael, because... Yes, you'll uh, need four and a half minutes to get through the lot of it, Bill. But winner Manley, there are eight tries on the board. Two have been scored by David Green. Tries also by Warren Green, Greg Dowling, Brian Waltz, Brett French, Gene Miles and Wally Lewis. And uh, we've seen Green, Warren Green put over five goals from eight attempts. For Souths, no tries on the board. The lone goal kicked by Mal Meninga. He also missed one, so it's one from two for him. Scrums at this stage, South's way by seven to five. Penalties have gone South's way, seven to six. Souths have missed 34 tackles. And that's a conservative estimate. Uh, as opposed to Winner Manley's 12, Souths have lost the ball on 14 occasions, Winham on 12, and Souths have kicked on 14 occasions as opposed to Winham's 9. Lost by Abbott, picked up by Gene Miles, he loses it. And eventually Jackson dies on it, but the referee to play a double knock on. How many tackles missed again, Bill? Uh, 34. That's not good. And the man doing our scoring is a South supporter, so he's left a few off. <laughs> yes, I suppose. And I don't blame him. So it's Dawes over to Lewis. Lewis outside to Morgan. There's the gap. He's up over the halfway. He's on his own. Got away from Belcher's tackle. He starts to go again. He's up over the quarter line. He's pulled down just inside that quarter. I don't know how he got through. Well, the break was there initially. This is Bullock. He shouldn't have got as far as he did. Yes, but we've been saying that all afternoon. It's because he's not being tackled by anybody. So this is Lewis. Long one over there to Brett French. French cutting back inside. Picked up by Bob Linder in the tackle. 20 metres short of that southern suburbs line. Dummy half is green. David Green over to Lewis. Lewis. Ooh, he almost got it away then to Brett French. French was flying through. But well, the referee has ruled a knock on. Lewis doesn't feel he has knocked it on. Well, he went to pass it and it hit a south bloke, so he picked it up again. So I would presume that the advantage would uh, go ahead. But, oh well, Mr Manson doesn't agree. Talking about the referee, Mick, he hasn't had a bad game, but he hasn't had that much to worry about, has he? No, actually, uh, it's lucky he's lost that few kilos or he wouldn't have been able to keep up with the scoring spree by Wyndham Manley, sprinting up and down the, the field to award tries. Just under three minutes remaining in the match. Wyndham's lead is 42 to 2. And the tap to be taken 25 metres out from the south line. So it's Sully back to Meskell, back to Sully. Sully setting sail up the centre. Tackler over there will be Gary Coyne. This is Ash Lumby. Well, Mick, normally at this stage I'd ask you to give a resume, but I don't think there's a great deal to tell. The no, scoreboard says it all. And I think if you've been watching the game all afternoon, you would know that positional play was non-existent by the South players, and uh, they didn't want to tackle anybody. That's Bob Linder putting a little kick. Is this going to be South's try? There's two and a half minutes remaining. Linder pulled down short of the line. He can't get over. Just short of it. He'll get up to play it. Can this be the elusive try they're after? No feeder Jackson. You won't get through there, my boy. Getting up to play it. Final tackle. So back to Bruce Harry. Harry, a big long one. Ash Lumby takes it. He gets it around the corner to Meninga. Meninga gets it away to Abbott. Abbott's going for the line. Tackled by Walsh, but he's in for the try. So South getting in with a minute and 42 remaining in the match. As you'll see on the replay, uh, ball is thrown long and wide. Ash Lumby to Big Mal. Mal throws a wild one over the top. I tell you what, Abbott did immediately put that one down too and there wasn't anybody around. And a consolation four-pointer to Southern Suburbs. There's Bruce Harry right up over the top. Now Ash Lumby will pull it down. Whoop, down it comes. Over to Mal Meninga. Meninga will take the tackle of Gene Miles. And over to Hubie Abbott, who juggled it a bit. Went for the line, Brian Waltz was there. Tackled by Waltz, but he was able to dive over and score the try. Meninga attempting to convert, he's spot on line. Beautiful kick from the touch line. Makes it 42 points to eight. And we're into the final minute of play. So the one lone try, eight tries to one. 
goal. Peter Jackson not even worried about the game. He had his back to that ball when Lewis kicked it off. That player there. So to, and they're supposed to be A graders. I tell you what, it's a pity South didn't run their reserve grade out. They'd have done a better job than this particular team. Here's the final scrum of the grand final. Final scrum of the season going down. In by Sully. Takes it out. Cross over there to Belcher. He's tackled. Put down. About 10 metres out from his own line. Crowd started to pour onto the field already. It hasn't finished. But it's all over now. And that's it. Winner Manley convincing winners of the 1984 grand final. They've taken it out by 42 points to eight. And somewhere out there, Michael, is our man of the match to receive $200 worth of Canterbury gear and also the System 21 Stereo EC. And that man is Brian Walsh, who... That's in not the him early, there. That's, no, uh, that's the, what he's going to... Or partly what he's going to receive. Uh, and there's the rest of it. Beautiful prize for him. And, and uh, I've given it to him because he's a man that was in the hot seat and he handled the situation beautifully that first 15 to 20 minutes when he was under heaps of pressure and didn't make one mistake and win and went on from there. But well done, Brian Walsh. There he is. Well, he's there somewhere, Mick. Yes, Kids well, everywhere. There he there is. You can see him over the back there with number one jersey on. Brian Walsh is our man of the match. $200 worth of Canterbury gear and the System 21 stereo from NEC.